What about the statements that she allegedly made at the time of her arrest uh, regarding sex for drugs and regarding who her father was? I have no idea. The police reports that I've been given don't have any of that in it, so I have no idea about that. I don't know whether it's accurate. I don't know anything about it whatsoever. She reportedly said, my father's a judge. He's going to kill me. Well, knowing her father as someone I've appeared in front of over the years, her father runs the drug court in Dudley District Court. He created the drug court. Uh, he is someone who is intimately uh, familiar with the struggles of drug addicted people and I think he's probably heartbroken um, I think he is frustrated with her to, to no end and I think if she said if she said uh, my father's gonna kill me that's probably a reflection of, of something close to true without being literally true that her father was extremely disappointed in her I mean that as any parent would be do you think that was misconstrued as a threat of that no. she has influence no well, well no 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 it was nothing if, if that statement is what she said it didn't say, she didn't say anything about my father's a judge, give me a break. She said, my father's a judge, if she said it, and he's going to kill me, suggests to me that her father was going to be very disappointed in her conduct. Has as she he should be. Has she talked about any remorse at all in, in terms of being the center of what's been called Troopergate? We have enough, she has enough on her plate as it is, and, and, and to, 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 to burden her with, with thinking about those issues over which she had absolutely zero to do with and zero control over, the answer is no. We haven't had any discussion with her about that at all. But she, but she is extremely remorseful about her conduct. That's why she entered a plea of guilty today. She had every right to come into this court and ask for continuance without a finding and to have the matter continue the way many cases are in the Commonwealth and not have a guilty on her record. But she wanted to dispose of this today. She wanted to get on with her treatment and she didn't uh, care to have the 924D program as something hanging over her head. Do you have any concern about the integrity of the report though? Uh, I mean, right now you're saying that you've never seen any of these things. My that are... client just admitted what was read in court was true. So I have no quarrel with the report. I have no quarrel with the state police. We deal with the state police on the majority of our cases. They do a good job. I have no difficulty with any aspect of this from my point of view with the state police. Mr. Walcox, do you have any sense of why the head of the state police would intervene on her case specifically? I have no idea. No. None. No idea. So it's, it's, your, it's your understanding then that neither Ali nor Judge Bebo had anything to do with asking for favorable treatment in this case? Well, I can only just what, what Ali knew and what Ali did. And Ali said nothing to, to anybody about making phone calls for her. She was in a, a treatment facility immediately uh, and was not in communication with anybody until her arraignment in this court on uh, October 30th. So th that, that didn't happen, I know that. Uh, knowing her father is a professional who appears in front of him, it would be shocking to me if Judge Bebo would get involved in that fashion. And I understand from reading the paper that he said he didn't do that. So I take him at his word. He is a man of extraordinary integrity. He is a judge who is both fair and can, and can punish as good as anybody. He is an outstanding jurist. And the sad part of this is that between the sort of non-mainstream media types that have been slamming him for a month, including that nitwit Howie Carr, um, you know, he, he, that's not who he is. It's not what he's about. It's not what he's ever been about. This man, in his own time, creates a drug court that saves lives. He is heartbroken that his daughter needs his help that way. And I, I just think it's, it's tragic what's happened. It's just tragic to suggest that this family had anything to do with anything that's gone on with the state police. Why do you think the state police would order this report changed? Well, I, I don't know why they, why they did. I don't know that, I, I assume the allegations are somewhat true because I, I understand that two members of the state police um, management have stepped down. But I don't know of any reason why those statements would be in a police report to begin with because having nothing to do, as you heard today, they had nothing to do with the facts that needed to be proven. Commonwealth didn't rely on those statements, did they? Did you hear anything in, this, in the Commonwealth's recitation of facts that had anything to do with statements made by Ms. Beevil? Nothing, nothing was said about that because it's not germane to the charges that she was facing. And whether they put that in there because she's the judge's daughter, you'd have to ask the trooper. I have no idea why such salacious, unnecessary comments would be contained within a police narrative report. But that's, you, you, that's you, not an issue that I can really address. Are you, you, you the insist that were improper? No, not at all. I'm just saying I don't understand why they would be in there. But you insist that the, the judge didn't have anything to do with it, the, uh, your client didn't have anything to do with it? I'm only suggesting that I know for a fact that my client didn't have anything to do with it. What about the judge? I, I, I take him at his word what he's read, said publicly. I have not talked about it with him personally.